Hello, and welcome the Dean of, Col of the College of Engineering to our presentation today outlining a new program we have developed in order to assist minorities and women in STEM fields. This program is called the DISC program, Diversity in STEM Curriculum. There is a major institutional problem within engineering when it comes to a lack of diversity at both the professional and undergraduate levels. STEM fields should seek a diverse workforce in order to expand their discoveries by having people from all different backgrounds offering their particular perspectives. The engineering design process and the feminist perspective can be harnessed to transform engineering design from a capitalistic process into one more focused on care and general well-being. Primatology is a great example of a particular subject in which women have taken an increased role in, and therefore the science, has, the science has been expanded to include reflexivity, the female point of view, cooperation rather than domination with nature, humanitarian, human, humanitarian applications, and greater inclusiveness of marginalized groups. In order for there to be a more diverse workforce, universities must take on the responsibility of diversifying its students. Programs such as the College of Engineering and the College of Sciences are unintentionally setting up minorities and women to fail compared to their white male counterparts. The playing field is far from even, and this can be seen by significant retention decreases for women and minorities after the first two years of undergraduate work. Through research, we have concluded that significant change can be made starting in the first two years of these curriculums in order to set up students for success through graduation. To increase retention of women and minorities within the STEM fields, we propose the implementation of the Diversity in STEM Curriculum DISC program that targets freshmen and sophomores and transfer students by providing an environment that aids in the growth and development of students through a change in curriculum and the establishment of mentorships. First, we'll take a look in the change of curriculum. I'm going to speak on the, the new curriculum that we propose as part of our DISC program. Basically, the current standard curriculum in engineering has flaws, and these flaws harm women and minorities more so than white males. The paper, Can Diversity in Undergraduate Engineering Population Be Enhanced Through Curricular Change? exemplifies how the curriculum causes these problems and also demonstrates examples to improve the engineering curriculum. We can apply some of these solutions to courses here at NC State in the first year of engineering to increase retention and improve diversity of engineering majors. First, let's examine the problems in the standard engineering curriculum as defined by the paper. The first big problem is that it hazes students with hard, unrelated classes before rewarding them with classes that are engineering related. Students are forced to take many challenging math and science classes before they're able to be rewarded with engineering classes that interest them. The curriculum also fails to the link to the engineering profession. Uh, students are not given examples of how what they're doing relates to engineering, and oftentimes the actual role of an engineer is not mentioned when they're learning about engineering. In this way, the curriculum assumes prior knowledge of the profession, and it's assumed that students who are studying engineering already know a lot about the profession of engineering. The programs also typically focus little on freshmen, both financially and, and also in, in the curriculum, due to the fact that they know many freshmen will leave. This, in turn, it makes the problem with freshmen worse. Here are how these problems cause, um, make things harder for women and minorities. Women and minorities are statistically less likely to have experience with the profession of engineering than their white male counterparts, who often know engineers via their family or friends of family. Women are also statistically, and this is all due to that same paper, women are statistically more likely to choose majors where they know they'll be able to make a, a difference and do good in the world, and also when they know how they'll be making this difference. Minorities tend to choose careers that reflect the values of their culture. So along with these factors, um, women and minorities become dissuaded from being engineers due to the attitude of exclusivity. In addition, many professors, um, when they know, they know that female students are less likely to achieve these careers, tend to treat this knowledge when they're educating them like it's not something they're going to ever have to use. And so this causes a problem, as mentioned in um, the Cognitive Differences paper we looked at in class. Here's how these problems have been solved by other universities. Many schools have tried curriculums that integrate science and maths and applications. For example, Tufts and Drexel have both uh, tried some of these programs. Tufts University implemented freshman electives that were called exploring technology electives that allowed students to link what they were learning to technologies in the real world. They experienced a drastic net influx of women in engineering transferring in during the sophomore year to do to the, once these uh, electives were implemented. Also, the National Science Foundation implemented its Gateway Coalition program to try and uh, 
uh, reinvent the engineering curriculum. Big universities like Columbia, the New Jersey Institute of Technology, the Ohio State University, Polytechnic University, and the University of South Carolina, along with other schools, were all a part of this program. Um, they had drastic success with an increased retention rate of 30% for minorities, 20% for women, and an overall increase for everyone from just 86% from 70%. They also noted that it's better to demonstrate the real world role of engineers when educating. The Accreditation Board of Engineering and Technology, ABET, um, which accredits our engineering program, in 2000 set criteria for improving engineering curriculum, and they encourage a strong link between subjects, fundamentals, and applications. Here's how we can apply this at NC State. The first thing we need to do is modify E101, Intro to Engineering. Change it from a class that meets once a week that's one credit hour to a two credit hour uh, course that meets twice a week. We're going to implement problems and uh, that involve students using things they're learning in their other classes, and it's going to be based on what those students are taking. For example, a freshman E101 who's taking Calc 2 in physics might learn about using integration and applying forces to a bridge problem, but another student who's only in Calc 1 in chemistry might learn about different uh, rates of reactions in, chemi in chemistry and apply that to an engineering problem. The important thing is that these problems will all be engineering problems that are based on real engineering situations, but simplified down for students based on their level of knowledge of the sciences they're applying. Mentors for the mentorship aspect of the program, which we'll discuss later, will also be assigned through this class. The second aspect of changing the curriculum is encouraging integration of math and physics and engineering curriculums in the early math and science classes. So for example, we're going to have more example problems in math classes that relate to physics and engineering, and more problems in physics that relate to engineering. So in a Calc 3 class, instead of just learning a flux integral, the student could be asked, for example, to solve a word problem in which an engineer needs a certain amount of flux in a transformer or circuit in order to have the um, device work properly, and then be given math and use math to solve that problem as opposed to simply just doing the math without any kind of context. This is going to help the student understand that what they're learning is related to engineering and also help them uh, understand how engineers actually use these uh, maths and sciences in their jobs. We're also going to apply this to physics as well. Now we'll go on to speak about mentorship. And I will elaborate on the mentorship program that was mentioned earlier. And so the idea for the mentorship program was actually created by research done by LSU. LSU targeted underperforming minority freshmen and sophomores and they had them participate in a mentorship program. And so from this program, they were able to see an increase in retention from 20% for people who were not participating in the program to 50% for participants. And so from this, it can show how this increase in retention also leads to an increase in diversity among the STEM fields. And so our goals for this program would be to create relationships between staff and students because if students have a good support system, they are more likely to stay within STEM fields because they know that they are not alone and they have resources to help them get through it. So that, and in addition to being able to create a support system through this program, would overall increase the retention rate, which is the overall goal for the DISC program. The many focus points for this, we will have them focus on points while they are in the mentorship program. So students would be able to work on time management, work commitment, improving from failure, and critical thinking. And these skills are not only something the students can use in college, but it can also transfer with them as they go on into their intended field. And so how we would have this happen is this would be a subset of the newly constructed intro to engineering class, as mentioned earlier. This would be specifically for women and minorities who were already enrolled in the class. And from this, we would find their interests and we would match them with mentors. So for example, if a student is interested in mechanical engineering, would find an alumni who also might work at Toyota and pair them up. And so they would actually have two mentors though. They would have an undergraduate mentor and an alumni mentor. So the undergraduate mentor is, help, is there to help them get through their undergraduate career. And so they will help them understand what teacher to sign for, sign up in class for, and what things to do, what things not to do. And our requirement is that the undergraduate should be of a similar background because it's better to help create the connection between the student and the mentor. And then we just ask that they meet monthly so that they can continue to know the progress of their mentee. Alumni mentors are to help increase the, increase the passion of the students so that they can see what they are working towards. So we also ask our alumni to be of similar background because it's very encouraging to see someone that looks like you make it through all the obstacles that you are currently going through. And for this, we just ask that they monthly 
go through a monthly correspondence with their alumni mentors because we understand that alumni do have responsibilities responsibilities outside of this and that they meet twice a semester in person. In addition, though, we would ask for one day of job shadowing so the students can understand what they are working towards and it help increase their passion and overall increase retention. In conclusion, as the Dean of the College of Engineering, you have the power to implement programs such as the DISC program to include women and minorities by providing the extra support and changes needed to foster and boost their education. It is obvious that change needs to be made to have a more representative field of engineering. And the best way to start is early on when one chooses to pursue a career as an engineer, with early excellence leading to a passionate and successful career. NC State is home to a renowned College of Engineering that could set the future of the field and work towards being a model for other institutions. Please refer to a similar program at LSU for more information that how we based our program on. And thank you very much for your for your attention.